Hello and welcome to another episode of Taylor Talks Comics. Today, we're going to be going over the box set, The Complete Eight Ball, issues 1 through 18. Okay, so this is Daniel Klaus' one main anthology, The Complete Eight Ball. This is the series that put Daniel Klaus on the map. Um, a lot of his stories that you might be familiar with, whether it be um, Ghost World, um, Death Ray, Dan Pussy, those all came, those were all serialized throughout April. Uh, Wilson, that was another one that was made into a movie. Um, this is the box set that collects the first 18 issues. It doesn't collect issues 19 through 23 because those were of a different size and you couldn't really... Well, you couldn't really put them in there. So it's kind of two eras of eight ball, like one through 18 is one era and 19 through 23 is the other era. This was put out by Fanagraphics Books and this is massively out of print. Um, the good news is for anybody that watches this video and is interested in reading these comics is that Fanagraphics is releasing the complete eight ball in a paperback edition soon and it'll collect the same material one through 18 and it's in a paperback i don't know if it'll have all the bells and whistles that this one has but it will com it looks like it will completely collect all those 18 issues i haven't decided if i'm going to get that yet i might do like a comparison video um and give it away or something i don't know but regardless these are great comics and everyone should read them this box like i said it's massively out of print it took me a long time to hunt this down it was like my number one whale um that I was searching for, hunting for, to use a Moby Dick term and a term that collectors use, um, because it was $100 cover price, I think, or maybe $110, $118 cover price, $118.99. And it's, since it's out of print, people were paying like four or $500 for an eBay, which is just astronomical, and I would never pay that much money for a collected edition. So when I say I was hunting for it, Part of the hunt is finding it for a good price. And I finally came across a copy that I bought used from someone on a group that was under cover price. Um, it was a great deal. I was so thankful that he sold it to me. So now I have it. So I'm gonna go over this collection and show you why this is one of the best put together collections of comics I've ever seen in my life and what makes it so great. So it is a slip case and it does include two hard covers on the inside. Um, so let's take, the hardcovers out and I will show off those in just a moment. Let me put them over here. Show off this this box because it's amazing. So that's the cover. You get like a lot of characters within um, the book that you'll meet. Uh, oh, like a violet glove cast in iron is another story that's collected in here that um, is a pretty big deal. That's a character from that. Um, that's Lloyd Llewellyn. There's Dan Pussy and there's Dr. Infinity. I just name a few people. There's Daniel Klaus himself, who appears within the story, or within the stories. The lettering, which one thing Daniel Klaus, his lettering is just superb, and the different types of lettering he can do. Um, and I love that they used, in each issue on the title, I'll show you when we get in there, I had a different lettering for the title of April. So they use like one, one, each letter uses a different font from that lettering, I guess, on the top there. This is the uh, slipcase here, so I always like when uh, slipcases where you can display them either with the books outside or the, the back of the box outside, so it gives you a choice there. And you can see the uh, spines also do their different lettering, but even double. The E's got, each letter's got two different fonts there. But yeah, so that's the back spine of the box. Um, here's the other side. And even just like little Easter eggs, it says 1 to 18 on his pin there with the Ghost World um, girl there. And then an 8 for April tells you the years there. This is the bottom of the box. And it tells you the price there and the top of the box. But that's not all, because the inside of the box actually has artwork in it. It's like the insides of someone's guts almost. And the brain up there. So Daniel Klaus really put a lot of love and care into this collection. Uh, and so did Fanagraphics. Um, Alright, so here's the two hardcovers that you receive. With 
the front covers. You can see this one in volume one collects issues one through 10. Volume two collects 11 through 18. Like I sh already showed you the spines there. And then the back with more lettering and cartooning style and whatnot. So the first thing that you'll notice if you, um, we'll just take volume one here because it's the most apparent. If you just hold it up to the camera there, you can see that the paper on the inside is different colors. It's because every issue collected in here, it's a true facsimile issue of April. So facsimile editions are usually when people reprint, when companies will reprint a single issue and re-release it. Um, but it's not always printed on the same exact paper stock and use the same coloring and whatnot. This did. So every issue of April with the exact same paper stock that they used when it was first printed is reprinted in here the exact same way. And I'll show you that example on the inside. So the, uh, the end papers here on both books. Well, I'll just show you, I'll show you volume one first. The end paper again has all this cool lettering um, from Daniel Klaus, all the title lettering of April. I believe the back, yeah, the back end papers are the same. And then there's the title page. There's the complete eight ball again. Issues one through 10. So this was new artwork that Daniel Klaus did just for this collection. Even some buildings here that make sense. So this is Fantagraphics, the publisher. Infinity Comics is the pub name of the publisher inside of uh, the Dan Pussy story. And then here with all the indicia and whatnot. So the designer is Daniel Klaus. Uh, production went to Paul Brush and Keely McCarthy. Um, credit. And then here's like the how eight ball came to fruition this little paragraph um what daniel claus says prior to eight ball i had another comic series from fanographics called lloyd llewellyn which was canceled due to low sales after seven issues in 1987. overwhelmed by failure i decided to put everything into one last hopeless non-commercial effort hoping to finish one or two issues before being expelled from comics forever um so obviously the success story there is that he did 23 of these and then went on to be a very successful cartoonist. And it t explains here why 19 through 23 are not collected. Um, here's the contents. So it gives you the issue number, the month it came out, and what page the issue begins on within this collection. And it, cl it tells you which stories are, all the stories that are collected within each issue. And then here's issue one. So the first thing you'll notice is that the, I don't know if you, if you're gonna come, the covers are the, the glossy covers that you would expect when you bought the original first issue even has the inside um, work here with the inside indicia and all the hand lettering there and then the paper stock on the first issue and the first few issues is this almost newsprinty matte um, yellowed paper and that's the first of few issues and then as it goes on the paper stock changes just a little bit until eventually, with issue here it is. With issue number five, the paper stock turns into glossy white paper. That's what it continues on for the rest of the series. So, um, what is April? Like I said, April is a one-man anthology comic book. If you're not familiar with the term one man anthology or one woman anthology. Um, they're usually in the underground scene um, where one cartoonist that does all the pencils, inks, um, lettering, all the writing will do an anthology. And anthologies are you, in comics are usually like, you know, like one page strips all the way to eight page, 12 page strips, all compiled together in one single issue. So within this one, this first issue, like I showed you in the contents, it has like a velvet ca glove cast in iron, part one, and it has the laughing spit man, young Dan Pussy, and what is the most important invention of the 20th century. So those are all the, what's included, all the stories with included in the first issue. So it's not just one continuous story is what I'm trying to get at. With that said though, like a velvet glove cast in iron, that story is serialized throughout it. So you'll get one strip of that 
in each issue for the first 10 issues. Um, but really, what you see in these one-man anthologies is just a continuation of um, that artist, that cartoonist, really just going for it and just really just trying out everything they can possibly try. So one thing you'll notice, too, is that um, Daniel Klaus is, is great with portraits. Like, his face, his portraits are just, like, incredible um, as far as, like, the symmetry goes, just the realism in his cartoony. But he can also do, like, cartoony faces like this. Like, this is Dr. Infinity, who runs the publishing company for Dan Pussy. Um, Dan Pussy, the story of that is, like, a, a cartoonist trying to do superhero comics, and he's successful at it, but he's still kind of miserable. And Dr. Infinity, you can imagine, is, like, he's not exactly like a Stan Lee type, but he's, like, every, every horrible thing you've heard about Stan Lee and how he ran things as an editor is kind of who Dr. Infinity is. <clears throat> So that's the story there. And it's kind of a self-deprecating um, commentary, too, because Daniel Klaus, throughout this, you can imagine, um, in a way, envies that, but also despises the whole big two market of making comic books and whatnot. So but one thing you can also notice, too, is that Daniel, Daniel Klaus um, grew up as a big fan of, like, St Silver Age Marvel. I mean, Steve Ditko is a huge inspiration. You can see that in his artwork. I think with the way he draws figures and faces is very Steve Deco-esque, which is one very endearing thing about his artwork. Um, but yeah, so that first issue begins there and ends here. And even the paper stock on the back is that glossy paper. So like, this is like exactly what the first issue of April was like from paper stock to paper stock. And the one thing cool thing about April is he always had like comic strips on the back too. So like it was a whole complete comic from like there was not a wasted page or moment within the issues. Like right here on the inside and the inside back cover it has some like funny ads and stuff and then that. And then you'll see later the inside back covers. Oh yeah, that's so it's a whole comic strip right there and on the back. And then inside back cover becomes a comic strip right there. And then a later, and he'll also collect the letters in here, which is cool. And the crazy thing that Tino Klaus did is he'd hand letter all these letters that people would write. So he would have to pick out the letters that he wanted, and then he'd hand, hand letter them within here to uh, showcase them, I guess. And then you'd get those. And then there's, and as you can see, you can see the progression too, um, as far as like, the collections that are that are they've sold or rubber stamps or mugs um this was a pretty big phenomenon and within underground comics uh, in the 90s um around the same time pete bag was doing his hate comic strip which i've showcased on this channel before too in the box set that that has so that's it for the first volume it includes issues one through ten and facsimile copies and then you get this here which is behind the eight ball I don't know if this will this part will be collected in the paperback. I hope it is because it's really informative and, and pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. And this is just annotations that Dino Klaus did when putting this collection together, explaining what was happening in his life at the time or how things were received as far as these stories go. Um, or maybe inspirations be behind people, like like the reference of who that was. And then like the color guides that he used for the covers because those were pretty insane. And then a thank you note with a younger Dan Klaus portrait. So that's volume one. Volume two is where probably his most famous story, um, Ghost World, is serialized. Um, Ghost World was a movie starring um, Scarlett Johansson that came out. And Dan Klaus had a pretty big hand and in, in created i think he wrote the script for it and then i don't think he direct did he direct it he he at least was on set regularly trying to make sure that was put together well so like i showed you the end papers are different than volume one but they're the same up front and back more awesome lettering and then your title page and then more pages and this one is falling apart as it's uh 
coming to the end of um, the run. I'm sorry, I was just reading the... Yeah, this has a, another uh, Kim Lives. That's a... Kim Thompson was one of the main publishers. Kim Thompson and Gary Grother, who uh, started Fantagraphics, and he passed away. Um, I, I don't know how far before this collection came out, but that's obviously a tribute to Kim Thompson, who was really close to Dan Klaus. Uh, yeah, so this one, this volume collects, um, like I said, issues 11 through 18. And now you're going to see a lot more color used. So before, and he talks about this in the Behind the 8-Ball section, um, before they can only get color for like an 8-page signature within the comic book. Um, so like 8 pages could be color and the rest would be black and white or whatnot. And then Ghost World was done in this... Well, it's on duotone because there's three colors so trio to tune i don't know if that's a word but it, anyways it's black white and a color and i believe that changes throughout the the run of it and again that's the back cover of issue 11 so we're still doing comic strips on the back of the issues so just really fun um stories like they're hilarious oh this paper stock or this yeah, this cover's still, it's a glossy, but it's like flimsy, but this one's like real nice cardboard. So we're still getting different paper stocks used uh, throughout the collection. Which is just cool, because like whenever I'm reading like an omnibus from Marvel DC, like I want the true experience of what it was like to read these in single issues. That's what I wish they would do. Like I hate when they reprint the covers with no trade dress. I hate when they, or don't print the covers at all. I hate one that's used on like high glossy paper when that those comics were originally printed on cheap newsprint. So this kind of attention to detail I really appreciate in a comic book collection. There's one of these awesome covers with different title lettering. And the paper stock, since it is thicker, does make this comp this this volume kind of close. But you can just I mean you can push it down a little bit and Try to relax as much as you can. You might just have to hold it a little bit tighter when you're reading it. It's not a big deal. You don't. There's not a lot of gutter loss because he doesn't have a lot of splash pages that cover through the gutter. They're usually broken by panels, so there's not a lot of issues there. Um, this was. This is modern cartoonist. This is supposed to be. This was originally stapled in there. My copy fell out. I don't know if the previous owner. Um, took it out to read it, make it easier to read or whatnot, but this is modern cartoonist. This is kind of like his How to Draw Comics, the Daniel Klaus way. Um, little mini comic, which is cool. And then here's the Behind the Eight Ball in the back with more. But yeah, Eight Ball, it's great. It's self-deprecating. It's dark humor. It's weirdness. Like a, like a, like a velvet glove cast in iron. That story in itself is kind of like a Twin Peaks um weird kind of uh surrealist horror um comic book uh i, I kind of often compare it to charles burns black hole because they're both kind of the surreal horror um subgenre uh, but yeah a lot of comedy um ghost world's kind of like you know teenage melodrama there's a lot of different genres and stuff in this one man anthology just dino claus going for it um him making fun of mullets before the word mullet was even coined he calls them neck warmers within the story and then one of the, one of the behind the eight balls he's like yeah i didn't we didn't call them molds back then but they were just neck warmers but there was a really stupid hairstyle i wanted to make fun of so yeah that's the complete eight ball um box said i love this it's one of my cherished um comic books that i own and uh i hope you guys have read it if you haven't let me know in the comments um let me know if you're gonna pick up the paperback that i talked about and um, let me know your favorite uh, eight ball comic strip that was serialized within it or your favorite Daniel Claus comic. Comment down below, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.